Welcome to Switch Comics. My name is Marco, and today I have five of my own personal graded comic books that I have for sale. Uh, if you actually follow me on Instagram, you may have actually already seen these. However, I wanted to go ahead and show a video on YouTube as well, because I know not everyone here is following me on Instagram. So before we get into the video, let me quickly tell you about my giveaway. I'm giving away three awesome comic bundles at 500 subscribers. That's right, three lucky subscribers will each win one of these three comic bundles. All you have to do to enter is simply be subscribed and leave a comment on this video. If you would like additional chances to win, you can watch other videos on my channel and leave comments on those as well. Each comment on a new video is another chance to win. Good luck. So if you watched my video yesterday, then you kind of would understand why I'm selling some of these books. I do think literally all of these books still have room for growth. These are hot keys. They're, you know, there's nothing cold about them. None of them have hit their peaks. Uh, I do think these are good books to have. I'm just looking to reallocate some of my funds and resources so that I can be purchasing other books as well. So it was a difficult decision. Some of these are more difficult decision than others, but it was nonetheless a difficult decision to decide to get rid of these. Um, I am still also doing the mystery bundles. All of these books, unless someone outright, uh, outright buys them, they will be available in my mystery bundles. So if you, uh, if you purchase any kind of bundles from me, uh, these could be something that I could include in there. And I may be popping up with some more books to sell whenever I have free time if I feel like putting stuff up there. Now today I'm just going to be talking about five books. They all are graded. Um, and so yeah, they're all slammed. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but uh, I, I, there is a, a nice uh, a feeling about being able to sell graded books. Because I can show you the book, tell you the grade, and that's it. Like, I don't have to sit here and be like, well, there's a little little corner rub and, you know, a, a tiny little ding. It kind of, you can barely even see it. And you, I don't have to go into a bunch of detail about stuff. I'm just like, here it is. It's a 9-8, you know, like, or it's a, a 6-0 or whatever it is, you know. You just know. You know immediately. So there's, I do enjoy that. And there's no arguing on, um, you know, I think it's this or that or whatever. So I don't know. I know graded books isn't everyone's cup of tea, but let's go ahead and get into it, starting with Something's Killing the Children, number one. Uh, this is the uh, foil, uh, what's it called, the local comic shop day um, variant, and this is a 9.8. And so this might be kind of hard to pick up on camera since it's a foil and it's a slab, so it's, and I have my big studio light <laughs> over there, so, you know, a lot of uh, things to reflect off of here. But uh, it's a very cool book. It's one I picked up because I'm a sucker for foils. Uh, and, you know, I knew something Killing the Children was hot at the time. I didn't know if this book would ever go up in value. But I was like, it's cool, you know? <laughs> and that's kind of how I buy books. It's like, I don't know if it'll be worth more money, but if it's not, it'll look cool in my collection. Um, this is a series I need to start reading. And, again, it is a hot book because this uh, will be getting a show at some point. I know they've been talking about it for a long time now. But, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, it's not going to happen. Setting up shows takes a long time. And I'm sure they want to wait until the comic gets, you know, a good long way into it so they know what to base their stuff off of. So, uh, you know, I would I expect to show from this at some point. I don't know when. I don't know if it's in a year and two years and five years. I don't know. It could be coming out. They could announce it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about this series, and I do expect uh, them to be working on a show. I'm, I'm sure they're figuring out the details. Uh, but that being said, you know, obviously, when this book... Oh, I, I didn't state. I, this is, <laughs> I'm asking $125 shipped. All my prices will be shipped uh, within the U.S. If you're Canada or Mexico or wherever else, you know, just, you know, hit me up and let me know, and I'll try to figure out what the shipping is, because international shipping is very, very expensive, and I can't eat those costs, unfortunately. <laughs> so I try to have my, my things priced reasonably, and I am... Maybe a bit flexible on my prices as well. Depends on what they are. But, uh, and, you know, as long as you're asking something reasonable as well. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, asking 125 shipped on this bad boy, I do think it still has plenty of room to grow. You know, it's it's good to have a 9.8. Obviously, this isn't the first print, but if you're looking to get into the game of Something's Killing the Children and you don't have... I don't even know what a, a 9.8 first print goes for. It's hundreds and hundreds of dollars, I'm sure. But uh, if not, it, I mean, it could be up to a grand. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at that book in a long time. But regardless, you know, for 125, you can get into the game and have a book that I, 
I do think it is desirable because it's it's weird with the later printings a lot of times like eh you know nobody really wants because this is like the seventh printing or something but it is the same cover as the number one and it's a foil and I I'm not the only sucker for foils I know that every there's other people out there that love their foils and it's a cool cover so moving on to my next book here we have Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16 at a 9-2. No, oh, sorry, 9-4 at a 9-4. I'm not trying to undercut myself here. I'm asking $250 for this one. And this is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau. Now, she does appear as Captain Marvel. Uh, you know, later on, she becomes Photon and Spectrum. Um, we're going to be getting more Monica Rambeau soon. And she's going to be appearing in the Marvels, which is essentially Captain Marvel 2. But it'll have, you know... Um, um, crap, what's her name? Brie Larson's character. <laughs> Captain, what was her name? Uh, Carol Danvers. And I have Carol Danvers, uh, Monica Rambeau, and then uh, Kamala Khan, or Kamala, Kamala? I, I don't know, I, kinda, I might be saying that wrong. I don't, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so, although I don't think Monica Rambeau will be referred to as Captain Marvel, probably Photon is my guess, you know, regardless, this is still her first appearance, and I expect her to be making a larger part into the MCU and also, you know, maybe part of the Avengers. I don't really know the team that they're forming to make the Avengers, but, I mean, she's going to be a pretty powerful character, so, you know, I imagine... I imagine she's going to be invited to the team. So, <laughs> definitely a good book to hold on to, and, you know, a good Spider-Man key. And this is not the only Spider-Man key I have for you today. I have another one, and this one was kind of hard for me to let go. I, I not too long ago picked this one up off my buddy. So we have Amazing Spider-Man 194 at a 6.5, first appearance of Felicia Hardy, The Black Cat, asking $300 shipped on this one. And, man, I love this book. I love Black Cat. I think we are due for some Black Cat. This one is definitely more speculative, uh, but... I mean, it just makes sense, right? I mean, we got so much Spider-Man stuff going on, and, uh, you know, MCU's doing Spider-Man stuff, Sony's doing something. They were talking about doing a Black Cat movie and a Silver Sable movie. First it was one movie, and then it was split into two movies, and then, I don't know, we didn't hear about it anymore. Regardless, somewhere, somehow, we gotta get a Black Cat, because she's just way too cool of a character. Little, I'm gonna insert this in here, it has nothing to do with... <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of does, I guess, but... Um, the Black Cat series that's going on right now is super, super good. I really recommend it uh, if you haven't uh, started reading it or anything yet. It has a great writer, and he's doing some cool things with Black Cat. And it's just a super fun character. I really, really, really like Black Cat. The only reason, and the only reason I'm actually selling this is because I ended up getting a, another copy out of uh, a mystery box. And I haven't graded it yet, but it definitely looks like it will grade pretty high. So I decided to let this one go. There's a part of me that was like, I could just keep both of them because I really like the book. I really like the character. And, uh, you know, like I said, I do think this book has plenty of room to grow. I mean, the thing with this one is like, there's not really, I mean, granted, there, there's been lots of talk about Sony doing something, but that's pretty cold at this point. Uh, we have not getting, got any updates on that for a while. So, I mean, if there were any, you know, new reports of a Black Cat movie, especially, like, if, if in the MCU, like, actually, you know, Marvel was able to do anything with the Black Cat character, this book would skyrocket. It would explode. It is a very, very good... It's awesome to have Spider-Man keys. Like, Spider-Man keys are super fun. I don't have a lot. I only have uh, these two, as far as, like, original run Spider-Man. I have, um, you know, First Carnage, and that might be about it, I think. I don't have a lot. Of, it's not an area that I've, I've delved into a ton, mainly because Spider-Man keys are very expensive. But <laughs> um, the last two here were probably the hardest decisions for me to get rid of. There are two books that I'm very much in love with, but also I think have just plenty of room to grow. So if no one ends up buying them, I won't, my feelings won't be hurt. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be very happy to keep these, but that being said, they are going up for sale. We have Invincible Iron Man, uh, number seven. This is volume three. I'm asking $200 on this one. It is a 9.6, and this is the first cameo of Riri Williams. Now, we're getting Riri, and she's going to be introduced in Black, in Black Panther 2, and then she'll be getting her own series 
uh, Disney Plus series Ironheart. Now, I don't. Um, well, first of all, I guess I want to say I'm I'm slightly mad at myself. This book could easily be cracked, pressed, resubmitted, and get a nine eight. I see what's wrong with it. It's a tiny little crease, very small. Not even crease. It's a just a you know non color breaking spine tick that could easily be pressed out. And I was being too confident and cocky, and I was like, yeah, we'll just submit these in. I don't need to press these, which I got lucky on the other one. But this one, I should have pressed. Could have gotten a 9 which granted, maybe when I, I don't even remember now, but when I submitted it, maybe it was fine. Sometimes, you know, they just handle it, and it's easy to get a little spine tick in there. And uh, got a, got me a 9-6. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. That being said, um, I, I just haven't done it personally. I don't think there's that big, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's definitely a difference. Currently, at the moment, there's not that big of a difference price-wise uh, between a 9.6 and a 9.8 in this book. So I was like, mm, do I really want to go through all that trouble and effort? And, you know, if I have to think about it and how I've invested into it, I had to spend money on the comic and then spend money to get it graded. And then it's like, is it really spending money to get it graded again going to be worth? And then get it pressed. And there's a lot of money to put into a book. Um, for not that big of an increase. I'm like, I'll just keep it as a 9.6 for now. If it was in my personal collection, I probably wouldn't. I don't know. It would be nice to match the 9.8. I don't know. Regardless, I, I, you know, I know everyone says, you know, crack it and get it. You could get a better grade, you know, but I genuinely mean it on this one. You know, I didn't tell you to crack the, uh, the Spider-Man 194. Crack it and get a, get a 7.5, you know. I'm not, not out here trying to trick nobody or anything, but I genuinely, and plus I didn't get that one graded, so I mean, maybe you could, I don't know, but I, don't, I can't, I can't speak on that one. This one, I can actually see what's wrong with it, and I'm upset with myself that I didn't get it pressed before I graded it, but regardless, Riri has plenty of room to grow. We've been watching her, or I've personally been watching her books for the past few weeks, ever, or ever since uh, the announcement that she was going to be in Black Panther 2, and this, her books have just been climbing. Uh, I mean, they were climbing beforehand, but the moment, I mean, we haven't even seen her yet, you know? The moment we start getting, I don't know if she's going to appear like in the trailer. I don't know how big of a role she's going to have in Black Panther 2. You know, it could be something very small, but even if it is, you know, something very small, she's, all her books are going to get huge price increases. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure during, you know, when we're leading up to getting her show on Disney+, Plus, we're going to see more price increases. So... Lots of room for growth on this one. I will be sad if you do buy this one, but it's okay. Because I will use this, use this money to buy other books, and it's the name of the game. I have to learn to detach. And this was a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a moment for myself. It's like, if I can let this go, I can let... Well, I was going to say anything, but not almost anything. I couldn't let this go. Can't let that go. Maybe She-Hulk eventually, probably. But you're never prying this one off me. Even if I buy another one in a higher grade, I don't know if I would give that book up. I love that up so much. But if I can let this go, I can let almost anything go. <laughs> now, the big one, the really hard one, we got Invincible Iron Man, number nine. Again, volume three. First full appearance of Riri Williams at a 9.8. I was so stoked when I bought this. And if you didn't watch the unboxing video, highly recommend it. I was very, very excited. Um, asking $900 on this bad boy, which is a lot, I know. But pay attention to the prices. This book has been climbing consistently. And it's not like huge jumps, but it's, it's getting there, getting it in there. This will be a $1,000 book, I am sure, very, very soon. And part of me is like, wow, maybe I should hold it for a little bit longer. I need, this is a moment for myself. I need to learn to let go, make a sacrifice. I think this is a super, super solid book to invest in. I honestly, if I sell this one, I'm probably just going to buy more if I can. <laughs> Whenever I see another one, um, I, I will keep buying this book, I think, as long as I can get it at somewhat reasonable prices. But being able to secure a 9.8 is definitely a solid, solid investment. Um, you know, not a complete black back. You know, it's not like this book where it's super, super black on the top and bottom and the back is all black. Um, but there is quite a bit of black on this cover. So you, you have those issues on it as well. The, the back, uh, covers is quite dark as well. And, um, you know, not a book that's super easy to find. It's not the hardest book in the world to find, but at this time, you know, I don't, I don't think a ton of people were, you know, getting this stuff and it's just, you know, 
I don't know. It's just one of those things that's like, yeah, it's, it's a little trickier. Even though it's modern, it's a little trickier to find. And that being said, being able to get a 9.8 is, is just super, super awesome. I love this book so much. I'm going to cry when it leaves. <laughs> if it leaves, I guess, if, you, if someone buys it. But uh, I, I do think... I mean, I've been investing in Riri books for a while now. I, I still have a bunch. Um, I, I think it's something super, super solid. I don't know what this book will go up to in value, but I mean, I would like to think easily 1500 No, I don't know. Again, I don't know when the peak's going to be. I don't know if that's going to be in Black Panther 2 or when she gets her own show or like we could get a Young Avengers movie. Uh, I don't know when the absolute highest we'll see this book go to. But I mean, I think 1500 is is an easy one. Uh, I could see it maybe even going up to like 2000 You know, I, these are not, you know, hard facts or anything. It's just my personal beliefs. And I'm not trying to inflate this book to tell you that you need to buy it. And it's definitely going to be worth these prices. These are just genuinely how I feel about these books. And in particular, this Invincible Iron Man 9. I think, I mean, just especially watching the growth since the announcement of Black Panther 2, or not of the movie, but that she will be in Black Panther 2. And I, I think this book's going to be crazy. And uh, it might be a book that I regret getting rid of at this point. Later on down the line, I might look at it and be like, oh my God, I can't believe it's this expensive now. I used to own this book. What have I done? But I'm trying to be a little brave, trying to separate a little bit of my personal attachment to some of my comics so that I can uh, start funding more comics. So <laughs> we'll see how this adventure goes. If there is anything at all you are interested in, obviously you can always hit me up on Instagram. But this the whole point of this video was basically if you haven't followed me on Instagram, because some people aren't into Instagram, I get it. I think it's super cool and I always recommend people, if you like comics, just go on there and follow comic people. And you can, if you're going there, you can just look at a whole bunch of uh, people's comics and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Or action figures, or you know, if you're a collector of comics, I'm sure you collect something else. Most of us do. It's an addiction we have. But <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff on there to uh, to check up on people uh, and see what they have. But you can email me at 36 symbols at gmail.com. It'll be in the description. Hopefully, I'll remember to do it this time. But um, yeah, I, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If uh, there's any questions or anything you have, again, all those prices are shipped to the U.S. Uh, I can be a bit negotiable, especially if you're going to maybe buy you know more than one or something like that. Uh, and I'm also still doing mystery bundles. So this was all kind of also a preview of books you could get in my mystery bundles. So if you want a mystery bundle, hit me up and maybe I'll get one of these in there. Uh, that's about all I got for you for today. And I will see you all tomorrow with a haul with uh, some cool comics and action figures. So, yeah. See you then.